If you're feeling way too much neck activity when you're doing breathing exercises, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to watch this video. So this week I was working with a client and we were working on trying to restore some dynamic function of the sternum. Now this is super important when you're breathing to have this dynamic sternum because it allows you to access movement of the ribs, which is necessary to be able to expand the rib cage. So in this case, we had an anterior to posterior compressive strategy. We were trying to get the sternum to move out upon inhalation. And then on exhalation, we were trying to reduce the amount that it came back to that more compressed position. So normal mechanics when we're breathing is that we expand a little bit on inhale. And then on exhale, it just returns to the start. But if we're starting from a point where things are already more compressed, it's a lot of times useful to try to get that anterior to posterior expansion so that we're not real narrow front to back like this and wide side to side, but so that we're actually resting with a little bit more of a normal shape here. So that was what we were hoping to accomplish through this technique that we were using, but we were running into a little bit of trouble here. And that was that as he went through the week and practiced it, he was feeling way too much activation in his neck to the point where it started to create some tightness and tension and cause a little bit of discomfort. So I ended up giving him three different strategies and we're gonna go through one of those in this video. So the important thing to recognize when we're talking about breathing is that every single muscle in the body can be a muscle that's used for breathing in one way or another. But the primary muscle of breathing in the body is the diaphragm. So when we go to take a breath in, the diaphragm comes down and as that pushes down on the guts, it actually creates a negative pressure in the rib cage and that's what expands the rib cage by increasing lung volume. So this should really be the primary muscle that's working. And the other muscles like the back or the neck, they might contribute a little bit, especially when you're at rest, it should just be a little bit, but it should be balanced between diaphragm and neck activity. Now, if you're doing something more intense like exercise, then that balance can shift where it's a little bit more even because you might need more help from those accessory or secondary muscles. But when we're just at rest, all this expansion through the rib cage that we want should just be happening really from the diaphragm being coordinated with the activity of the abdominals. So a lot of times the trouble that people are having when they're trying to do these breathing exercises is that what they start to do is they start to recruit too much of these other muscles. So in this case, we're talking about the neck, but this could also include the back muscles. And what people are usually doing is they're creating a position of the rib cage instead of getting expansion in the rib cage. So in the first case, which we'll talk about here in a second, it's going to be a shift or an orientation that changes position versus an expansion in the rib cage that changes shape. So when we're using the neck or the back here, what we're usually doing is we're usually pushing the rib cage forward and then pulling the rib cage up. So the back muscles can push the rib cage forward and the neck muscles can pull the rib cage up. And you can see how that changes the position of the rib cage. Now we're just really orienting that rib cage into a position in space without changing the dimensions of the rib cage all that much. What this does though, is it gets the rib cage up and allows a little bit more space for expansion to happen underneath it. Now that's not really what we're going after. What we'd want instead is to be able to keep that rib cage in that relatively centered position, get that downward action of the diaphragm and get 360 degree expansion. So not only movement out to the side with the ribs like this, but also front to back, anterior to posterior here, so that we're increasing the dimension and shape of the rib cage in a 360 degree kind of a fashion. If you're getting value from this video so far, consider liking this video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. All these things help the algorithm to help me help more people. So this difference here can actually be pretty subtle, especially if you've never worked with breathing before, but there's an important cue that you can use to start to gain some awareness of this. So if we think of the anatomy involved here, the diaphragm is gonna be right here at the lower rib cage, okay? And when it comes down, there's going to be an oppositional force from the abdominals. So we have those abdominals pulling in as the guts are pushing down and out because the diaphragm is coming down and those two forces oppose one another. And what that does is that increases negative pressure inside the rib cage and causes the expansion via increased lung volume. So there's a way for us to tap into the actual feeling of this by doing this breathing sequence. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a nice long exhale. And when we do that exhale, we're gonna do a gentle, open, relaxed mouth, and we're gonna go like this. And what we wanna feel, if we can imagine it, is a 360 degree compression in the abdomen where our abdominals are pulling in from the sides as well as from the front a little bit, taking our guts and tucking them in a little bit as well as back a little bit and even a little bit up. We can imagine that 360 degree gentle compression. This is not an aggressive squeeze, just a gentle tucking in of the guts. That's what we wanna feel at the end of that exhale. 
Then once we have a little bit of that tension, we wanna hold on to it, pause for a second, make sure that we can sense it. And then what we wanna do is we wanna get diaphragmatic activity against that tension. So the diaphragm is gonna come down, those abdominals will then oppose it. And what we're gonna get, if we can control the rate at which those abdominals expand, is we're gonna get that negative pressure in the rib cage to get the expansion we want. Then over time, over the duration of that next inhale, we're going to get a sequential expansion that goes from the bottom of the rib cage up to the top of the rib cage. Now the most important cue here is that after we do this exhale, we feel the guts tucking in, we pause, we sense it. On that inhale, we wanna think about where that diaphragm is. That diaphragm is gonna pull down or push down, however you wanna think about it, but it's gonna be this feeling of downward pressure. And so what we wanna think about in this case is that we're breathing down, literally pushing the guts down to expand up. We're not pulling the rib cage up to expand up. We're actually breathing down, compressing the guts from this lower rib cage and down, the abdominals just opposing that, slowing down how quickly that expansion of the guts out into the abdominal wall is happening. And then as a result, as the duration of that inhale goes on, we're gonna have this sequential expansion from bottom to top. So this is gonna be it in real time. We're gonna do a nice long exhale, about three or four seconds. Pause, we should feel that compression. Keep a little bit of that compression, breathe down against it, thinking about pushing the guts down. You'll feel a pressure going down, out against the abdominals, maybe even down to the pelvic floor. And then you'll feel that sequential expansion going from the bottom of the rib cage and up. Then we're gonna repeat. Nice long exhale. Tucking in, up, and slightly back. Pause for a few seconds. Then we're gonna breathe down against that, creating a little pressure in the abdomen. And we're gonna feel that expansion happening from bottom to top. And now we're gonna go even more subtle with it and bring it down to the most gentle, subtle level possible. Long exhale. Pause. Now breathe down to expand up, gentle. Keep going, keep going. Feel that air moving from bottom to top. Neck might be kicking in a little bit, but on balance we have good diaphragm activity, maybe some neck activity. Over time, you can even try to reduce the amount of neck activity, but the way I would do that for now is just to focus on that downward push of the diaphragm to then expand up. So now what if you're doing this exercise and you're still feeling way too much neck? Now there's a couple of issues you might be running into, and here are the most two common ones. So the first one is that we have too much of this shape that's compressed front to back and wide side to side. And so as we're trying to create this breathing strategy, we have a shape that's actually putting the diaphragm in a position where it's gonna have a hard time doing that. So the way to get around this is to figure out exercises, specific exercises to select that will help you reshape the rib cage towards this more cylinder type shape. And now the second issue that you might run into is related to position between the different aspects of your axial skeleton. So the axial skeleton is cranium, rib cage, and pelvis, and the spine that connects them. There's a position where these can all stack over each other, such that the pressures and volumes become distributed around a center point. So this is related to center of gravity of each of those segments relative to each other, as well as center of gravity of your whole system in space. There are different positions that you might need to be able to access both in that relative and absolute sense that can make it a little bit easier to access some of these breathing strategies. So if either of these two issues is something that seems like it might be holding you back, then go ahead and click the link in the description. I'll be opening up enrollment to my brand new group coaching program. We'll be covering this concept and many similar concepts in depth so that you can get moving and feeling better. All right, so that does it for this video. As always, thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, peace.